Hello, thanks for clicking on the video. Welcome to another episode. My name is Mike, I'm here with my dog Jax. And today we are gonna be camping in a canvas bell tent and I've brought with me a wood stove as well. Plenty of gear, it's getting down to almost freezing temperatures tonight. It's a lovely afternoon. Let's get the tent set up and get the wood stove burning.
so tent is set up the wood stove set up believe it or not this is our old family canvas bell tent it's a three meter bell tent that i've had for probably about 10 years now and i did a video with this on ta outdoors before my wife and i had kids just when Jax was a puppy actually uh, so that was about seven years ago now and there's videos on TA Outdoors of us camping in this bell tent over seven years ago, probably about that, maybe six years. But I'll put a link in the description to one of our trips with this, with the different wood stove when Jax was a real small puppy. Uh, but it's just nice to get it back out again. I've used it a few times since, but not enough really. And actually going in it inside it now, three metres at the time with me and my wife and uh, our, our dog, it felt huge but now when I go in there and we've got two kids I can actually look at it and think we're gonna need like a five five or six meter bell tent for our family trips but ideal for one or two people it's gonna be a really cozy night so it's all set up I've still got the bed to set up but we're losing light so I'd like to get some firewood now sorted and get the stove lit and then that's the kind of stress-free part the stress part done because <laughs> I'm racing against the light there's only about an hour left so let's crack on Lots of people asking about the TA axes when they'll be available. It will be soon. This is actually just a temporary sheath. It's not the sheath we'll be going for, but yep, TA axes are coming soon. Really looking forward to it. This is loaded with gear. It's a comfy camp. This is a Boreal 21 folding saw. I've not used this in a while, this smaller one. It's ideal. So. So I've actually pitched the tent conveniently near this dead, big dead beech branch. So I have plenty of firewood right next to the tent. I've got some ash as well, which I've been cutting up, but this is perfect. Just about to go punky, not too bad. As usual, Jax is busy doing Jax things and digging up the forest floor. What you digging? What you digging? Look at the size of this hole. What are you doing? Look at this. Jax, you're gonna break a leg on that thing. He's doing another Dakota fire pit. Look. Let me show you. I promise you, I haven't taught him this. I feel like he's doing a Dakota fire pit again. So we've got the main hole here, which he's dug, which is massive. And then now he's started to dig a little hole here. And he's making a little Dakota fire pit. <laughs> Jax, survival dog already. Main hole. And now he's digging a secondary hole for the air vent. Work away, Jax. We'll use that tomorrow. So big thing here, I've got the first flue section that has the damper valve. I normally always burn the stove with the damper valve open and control things via the airflow here at the front. 
um, it's more for when I'm shutting it down at night that you know the damper valve I still tend to keep it a bit more open I don't want it sitting sitting up but we'll see kind of how it goes so a couple of these uh, fire lighters like wood wool dipped in wax I believe let's just give it a go once it's going there's no going back really hopefully we get enough burning them to hopefully we get enough airflow basically we should do because there's no damper valve at all has been a while I always feel like I can relax once the tent and the stove are going. You don't have to worry about a campfire as much. You don't have to worry about a wood stove as much uh, compared to a campfire where you know you've got the elements that can affect it, the wind a lot more, the rain, the dampness. Whereas with a wood stove, you've got that efficiency of the, the air getting sucked through, drawn up through the flue. You just know that even with slightly damp wood, it's still gonna burn quite well. That's his see that little white speck in the background that's him digging another hole yet another hole the boy is relentless i tell you that um i have got a sleep set up for him a little sleep wall blanket for him i've gone for a warmer sleeping bag for me although i probably didn't need it really and i've got a nice comfy raised bed so it's a bit of a luxury camp Certainly by my standards, where I'm normally used to a, a tarp, open woodland tarp or a bushcraft shelter, I've done plenty of those, or sometimes a hammock. This is uh, this is a bit more of a luxury. If you go in this tent, Jacks, it's warm. There's a stove on for you. One of the things that I do for safety, certainly on my bigger tent like this, the canvas one, and when it's a bit breezy, like I know it's going to be today, is I have this, these hooks and these long pieces of paracord, these guy lines, three of them, that I hook onto the top of the spark arrestor at the top of the stove. It just means that when it's really windy, it stops it doing that, which can sometimes open up some of the ga tiny little gaps on the inside of the stove which is, is not such a bad thing when it's hot but when it's cooling down and it gets smoky that smoke could potentially get into the tent um, it also obviously stops the stove blasting around like that the stove at the top of it in case anything falls off or shaking any soot or ash off onto the onto the tent um, it's a little bit overkill it's not necessary but because i've got jacks with me as well tonight i just want to make sure he's safe and it's no extra onus on me for five minutes to just put these guy lines up, especially as it's windy and breezy. Um, right, we're there nearly. Keep all my sleeping gear at the bottom of my backpack. Makes it a lot easier. Three season sleeping bag, although I use this all year round now. This is my down one. I'm not going to set my thermo rest up just yet because it really is so warm in here already. And it's only going to get warmer. That's with the door open the porch of the tent. We're almost set up now. <laughs> it's going to have a little table over here. Um, the stove is going really quite well. So, uh, yeah, hopefully the tent doesn't catch fire or anything. Mm 
these have little storage nets underneath. Mesh storage nets. So you can just chuck gear underneath. That's the mesh. And then you've just got these metal plates which click in. Being metal, you can put hot hot plates on them, hot pots and pans. Which is a great idea. Obviously not for lightweight backpacking, but we're not lightweight back backpacking. That table can go there. I do have another one, but I might set that up nearer the stove actually. The sun has literally just set. So we have probably about half an hour now until dark. Just next to the stove. Not too close because there's Obviously material that might be flammable. All right about there. Got all the wood underneath it. Easy to get to. I'm gonna to need to chop some more in a bit. Got loads of time though. We are getting near cooking time, folks. Hopefully this cast iron up just... Oh, that fits quite well, actually. That's handy. Nice big cooking space. I do have a little water tank for this and everything, but not using it today. Just need a bit more wood in there and coals. Thing is, with cast iron, it just spreads the heat anyway once it's hot. It's going to dry roast a lot of the oils out. I've put some in already. But it's so small it falls in between the uh, veg. Before I go any further, I'm going to take a couple of bits of chicken out for Jacks before I put any seasoning in there. Just so he's got a bit of a treat as well. So we've got Italian seasoning, a bit of rock salt, and oregano going in. So 
So as I said, a bit of oregano, rock salt, Italian seasoning, pepper, then there's leeks, mushrooms, chicken, and now some stock. And if you guys can uh, see Jack's, just uh, like a judge on MasterChef, he is. <laughs> just making sure I'm not screwing it up. <laughs> You've got your own coming, Jacks, don't worry. Chicken and some kibble. A lot of people ask how much water do I bring on an overnight? And it, it kind of depends on time of year, summer, obviously more water, winter. And it also depends on what I'm going to cook. So on average, if I'm doing not a big, huge sort of meal that doesn't need much water, so if I'm frying a steak or something, I'll normally bring two litres. I can just, just about get by with two litres, but I have to kind of ration it. But typically, I'll bring three litres of water and then I don't have to worry about, you know, getting a headache or as such feeling dehydrated. I'd say three litres is the minimum, really, that you should be taking out if you can. Obviously, if you're having beers and things like that, it makes you a bit more dehydrated. Um, take that into consideration. Let's have a tidy up, Jax. Tidy up all the mess. I've had to have a flap open in the tent door because it's just way too hot in here otherwise. Way too hot. This is smelling amazing. Smelling really good. Oh, oh it's a lot cooler over here, Jack's where you are. Sitting by that stove. So people who say I don't bring Jack's food, he's got tons. He's got enough for about a 10 day trip. You go. Right, where's your chicken? You can eat the chicken first. Whoa. Nice. Are you ever gonna chew it? There we go. You like the chicken, don't you? Mm, it's dribbling everywhere. There you go, you can't really see it, folks, but essentially, it's good. Oh, it's lovely. Do you know what? I am too hot in a jumper. You're okay, you're lower down. I think it's where I'm like this much higher than him. The heat up here is just, it's unbelievable. A bit more chicken jacks. So far, nothing at all. Very peaceful night. Loads of owls, tawny owls. Probably hear the deer barking later. That'll be interesting to see if you bark. But yeah, other than that, it's, um, it's a peaceful evening. Good boy, Jax. Right, folks, I've just taken Jax out for his last wee. It's coming up quarter to 10. Uh, I've, not, I've, only, I've not put massive logs on the stove, just uh, whatever I had left, small ones. Jax is starting to uh, get a bit chilly now, aren't you? Now the stove's gone out. But I've got this wool blanket up on the bed now, so he'll probably sleep on the wool blanket and I'll wrap him up in that. We've got our little night light, so if I turn that off, that's our little night glow. I'm going to leave that on just so if Jack's barks in the night or whatever, I can see straight away <laughs> what's going on. I can get to things, I can, yeah, I'll just let it run out of battery. If it runs out, it runs out. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It's just handy to have on that little hanger. 
Um, that's it, folks. Yeah. <laughs> Content, aren't we? You've had lots of food. I've had lots of food. It's a bit windy now. The wind's picked up. So I'm glad I'm in this tent because it's got these big metal poles and they're in a triangle shape, which is rigid. So were something to fall, I'd like to think it would hit these and hopefully bounce off. But anything substantial would flatten most tents. If anything dramatic happens in the night, I shall let you know. But for now, we will see you in the morning. Good boy. Jack, so it's going to warm up, buddy. Sorry about that. Good to know the lantern lasted all night. Still going. That's pretty good. Doing a kind of uh, breakfast bap, basically just an egg muffin, and uh, I'm gonna give Jax his breakfast too. And serve said breakfast on this.
good thing about this is you can pop the door off like that. Get the grate out easy enough. This is, uh, this is cold enough now, these ash, this ash. The floor's still damp. These are the little S hooks I was talking about yesterday where I attach the guy lines to. So they just hook around this. I have another spark arrestor which has more of a grate in there which is easier for the hooks to go in but you can you can you can hear the wind today probably. It is windy. So um it's just dead handy to have on windy days like this where you you know you want your stove secure because once that stove's hot you can't really touch it even you know even with gloves you can't really tinker with it too much because it's gonna you know either affect the tent or ash is gonna go everywhere or the, you don't want any holes created in the gaps in the stove pipes so it's just something I do as an extra I don't do it on all my stoves just on a windy day something I sometimes I sometimes do I should probably do it more but Bit more of a safety factor. So that all slots in there, all the stove pipes, and then on goes the door. And that's it, ready to carry. Decided, you can see just down there, decided to leave the stove jack on. I was going to take it off and actually use it as a template for another tent, but I figure I'm going to use this again over the next few months, so I might as well leave that one on and get another stove jack for the other tent. Otherwise, it's just a bit fiddly doing all the wing nuts all the time. Uh, yeah, really, yeah. go big pack up that one long one well folks that's it from me and Jax another episode out here in the woods I hope you enjoyed it thank you so much if you watched it all the way through I do really appreciate it and uh, feel free to subscribe for more videos like this we've got some more trips planned I've got some more gear and yeah lots of other things I'd like to do here in the woods so thank you very much for watching uh, me and Jax will catch you in the next episode